we're going to be talking about troubleshooting your cable modem. Did you know your cable modem has a hidden user interface? Do you know all the data in that hidden interface can help make your home internet more reliable and even faster? I'm going to walk you through logging into your cable modem interface in detail what all that gibberish means. But first, I'm Brady Volp, founder of the Volp Firm and Nimble This. I have nearly 30 years experience in the broadband and cable modem industry. I'm here to provide education and not clickbait. If you like the content, please do hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell if you want to be notified of upcoming videos on related content. Back to the show. There are many reasons you could be having internet issues with your cable modem. Many times, you may find the easiest thing to do is a simple reboot of your cable modem, unplugging power supply on the modem and plugging it back in again. After a few minutes, the modem will come back online and the problems will be fixed. However, you really don't know the root cause. I'm going to show you how to log into your cable modem's diagnostic page, but more importantly, I'll go over the data on those pages. Let's get started. Nearly every brand of cable modem you will find, you can log into the cable modem's diagnostic pages using the IP address of 192.168.100.1 or 192.168.0.1. The default username and password will vary from modem to modem, but it's generally easy to find via a Google search. Just search on your modem, make and model, along with cable modem login, and you'll see a number of hits. In most cases, the username is admin and the password is password. There are some variations. In my example, I will be using an Aris SB6183 DOCSIS 3.0 modem. To log into it, I'll be connecting my computer directly to the back of the ethernet port on the cable modem. I need to do this because this is a test modem. I have a bunch of test modems laying around that I'll be doing this with. Depending on your router or firewall, you may find you can log into the modem without connecting directly to the back. But if you find you can't do that, then just connect your computer directly to the back of the modem to the ethernet port. You just do that for the purposes of logging in. Always recommend not connecting your computer directly to the back of the cable modem because there's no firewall uh, in many cases for that. So we are connected up here. We're going to go ahead and log in and show you what that page looks like. Here we are at the login page and at the top you can see it's 192.168.100.1. At the very top on the status of the modem, we find a number of valuable pieces of information as, fo as follows. At the very top, we can see that the modem has acquired downstream channel lock. This simply means that the modem has found a valid DOCSIS channel and was able to obtain a signal lock, which is the first stage of cable modem registration process. Next, we see the connectivity state, which is operational, meaning that the modem is online and registered with the CMTS. Things are looking good so far. The boot state indicates that the modem software is booted without any issue. And next we see the configuration file shows OK. The configuration file is a very critical step during the modem registration process. The cable modem downloads the configuration file from the TFTP server using the trivial file transfer protocol from the cable operator's head end. This file consists of a plethora of details the cable modem needs to know, including the maximum download and upload speed from your modem. Security is showing disabled on my modem. What security means on the cable modem is baseline privacy interface specification or BPI plus. This security encrypts data between the cable modem and the CMTS. This encryption is mostly provided to prevent theft of service by subscribers when enabled. It is very difficult to eavesdrop on another user's modem even when BPI plus is disabled as in the case of my modem because data is being transferred is modulated on an RF signal. To do so, meaning to try to eavesdrop on this data, 
One would need a very expensive DOCSIS protocol analyzer, and they would also need to directly connect to the coax cable. So while not impossible, it is by no, no means trivial to eavesdrop on someone's communications between the cable modem and the CMTS. Next up, we see DOCSIS network enabled shows allowed. What this means is I'm allowed to communicate to the internet over my cable modem. If this is not allowed, well, that might mean that I didn't pay my cable bill or maybe I connected a cable modem up to the network but didn't actually subscribe to the service. So if for some reason not allowed is indicated here or no is indicated here, that would be in indicated that your cable modem's online, but you can't actually communicate or connect to the service. Now the next two sections on here show your downstream and upstream channels. If you are having any type of internet performance issues at all, this is the place that you're going to want to look. So let's look at each section in detail. So first, let's look at the downstream bonded channels. On the downstream, we can see that the modem is bonded to or using eight downstream channels. On your modem, you may see that you're using more or less downstream channels. That's completely dependent upon how your cable operator has configured your CMTS. You may have a modem that can do 32 downstream channel bonding, but if your cable operator only has their CMTS configured for eight downstream channels, then you may only see eight downstream channels as what we're seeing right here. My modem, for example, can do, I think this modem can do 16 channel downstream bonding, but my CMTS is only configured for eight downstream channels. So that's what I'm going to see when I log into my screen. Each channel is locked, which is what I want to see here. If one channel was not locked, then I would be in what's called partial mode in the downstream. But I have a full lock on each downstream. My modulation is doing 256 QAM. In all versions of DOCSIS, there are two types of downstream modulations for each single channel carrier. One type is 64 QAM which will support roughly 27 megabits per second per channel. And the other type of modulation is 256 QAM, which will support 37 megabits per second per channel. Since my modem is locked to eight channels at 256 QAM, my modem could theoretically have a total downstream speed of eight times 37 megabits per second, which is a total of 296 megabits per second. My actual total downstream speed will be limited by how much I'm paying my cable operator for. Don't worry about the channel ID. That's something that the cable modem uses internally to keep track of each channel. Each channel has its own frequency. That basically tells us what frequency the channel is using to communicate with. In broadband, we use a cool term called frequency division multiplexing, or FDM. This just means we use many RF frequencies and stack them side by side so that the channels don't conflict with each other. Each channel also has its own receive power. And this is just the amount of RF signal entering to the back of the cable modem. The ideal receive power we want to see coming in the cable modem should be between minus 10 to plus 10 dBmV. Once your modem's channels start to exceed these values, either too low in power or too high in power, then the performance of your cable modem could become degraded. Next, we see SNR which stands for signal to noise ratio. And I, I will digress for just a moment here. SNR is a baseband measurement typically used for measuring the quality of audio and video signals before they're upconverted for transmission. In the cable industry, we have a history of incorrectly using SNR to label the digital signal quality measurements of signals. The correct terminology for this measurement is Modulation Error Ratio, or MER. As a user, you will see SNR and MER 
used interchangeably in the cable in cable modems, in CMTSs, in test equipment, literature, and more. If you're a stickler for being technically correct, then please know that MER is the correct term, as these measurements are analyzing the quality of demodulated digital signals, not baseband analog signals. I digress no more. The minimum MER, or SNR, on my modem that we need for an error-free reception of 256 qualm signals is 31 dB. As you can see with my modem, we are getting far higher than 31 dB, well, more than 10 dB higher than the minimum. So one would believe that everything should be perfectly fine with my modem. Next up is corrected and uncorrected code word errors. Corrected and uncorrected code word errors are likely the most important indicator of your modem's performance. First, what are they? To really understand code word errors, you really need to Google Read Solomon Error Correction, which is used for all DOCSIS versions prior to DOCSIS 3.1. You'll want to Google LDPC, Low Density Parity Check Error Correction, when you're looking at DOCSIS 3.1 OFDM and OFDMA signals, if you happen to see those running on your cable modems. But at a high level, a corrected packet occurs when your cable modem receives some data, the data has errors, but error correction is able to repair the errors in the data. So your computer never noticed the error at all. It's pretty much like the error didn't exist. An uncorrected packet, on the other hand, occurs when the modem receives a packet of data with some errors but the error correction was unable to repair the errors. So the modem just discards that data. When the modem discards the data, your computer either has to request that the data be retransmitted in the case of TCP IP, or if you're using a real-time service like voice and video, you may notice some lost voice or video traffic. So the next section now is dealing with data that's being transmitted by your cable modem to the CMTS, to the cable operator, and really to the rest of the internet. These are channels that your modem is using to transmit data on the upstream. Similar to the downstream, you can have anywhere from one to eight upstream channels that your modem can transmit data on depending on how your cable operator has configured their CMTS. In this example, we see there are four upstream channels. Each channel is locked, so they are in an operational state. The upstream is using ATDMA for transmitting data. Discussion on the channel type is out of scope for this topic, but suffice it to say that the Channel type will not have any impact on your modem unless you're looking to purchase a modem for your own. And I'll cover my recommendations on buying your own modem in a future video. Again, you can ignore the channel ID as this is used internally by your modem to keep track of the channels. The symbol rate indicates the bandwidth of the upstream channel where 2560 kilosymbols per second results in an upstream channel width of 3.2 megahertz, and 5120 kilosymbols per second results in an upstream channel width of 6.4 megahertz. Each channel has its own upstream frequency that it transmits on. In the upstream, the modems use frequency division multiple access, or FDMA, that's a little bit different in FDM in the downstream. And that just means that modems use frequency stacking, but each modem must wait their own turn to transmit data in the upstream. The CMTS allocates time slots to the modems so that your modem does not transmit at the same time on the same frequency as your neighbor's cable modem. And finally, we see the transmit power for each cable modem. 
the ideal transmit power that we want to see for each channel is between 40 to 50 dBmV. This is really important. If the transmit power is too low for your cable modem, then your modem's transmitted signal can get lost in the noise floor. If the transmit power is too high, say your cable modem is transmitting at 52 dBmV or higher, then your modem may run out of transmit power and its signal will not be able to reach the CMTS. It is usually very difficult for a subscriber or a homeowner to do anything about low transmit power. But if you're not experiencing any issues with low transmit power in your modem, hey, don't worry about it. It's not a problem. High transmit power will many times be caused by bad in-home coax or connectors or the coax and connectors just outside of your house. This is something you can tackle and make a big difference. In my video on T3 timeouts, I briefly covered this topic and I'll also be doing a much deeper dive on in-home wiring in a future video. Now we're going to look at the event log. So let's go back to the top and you'll generally see an event log tab. Click on that event log tab and here we can see a lot of concerning things and I this is also where I've talked about T3 and T4 timeouts this is where you'll see those type of events in my event log we see a lot of DHCP renewal warnings a lot of TOD or time of day warnings these are completely normal and can be ignored in fact there will always be a lot of events in your cable modem event logs, which can look quite scary, but as long as you're not experiencing any type of issues, these notifications are completely normal and should just be ignored. Don't, don't get worried about things that you see in event logs like MDD messages, lost sync messages. Um, a lot of the messages that you're seeing in my event log if you're not having problems with your service, if you're not experiencing issues and you see things in your event log and they say error, error, warning, notice, don't worry about them. Only be concerned about things in your event log when you're actually experiencing problems with your cable modem. So what type of things do you not want to see in your cable modem? Let's look at an example. We see an example here of a cable modem that is not locked on two of its upstreams. It, it's locked on upstream 0, 64 qualm, 35.8 megahertz. It's not locked on channel 2, and it's not locked on channel 3. This was sent to me by a colleague who first noticed they had slow data speeds. They looked at their modem and noticed that the upstream LED on the modem was orange. You'll notice that there's multiple lights on your LED. Uh, there's a top light that's going to tell you that, uh, first of all, the modem is on. The second light is normally your downstream light. The third light is normally your upstream light. And the very bottom light is normally the registered light that it's connected and communicating. So this was the light that was orange. That gave the user the indication that there was actually a problem. Upon logging into the modem's diagnostic page, they found what they see below. Two channels were offline, one channel was online. This is called partial mode. Partial mode occurs when a modem is only using some of its available upstream or downstream channels. In this case, the modem could be transmitting on three upstream channels, but two of the upstream channels have become unlocked. There are many reasons this can occur, but most are due to some type of impairment. In this scenario, the issue result was resolved by simply unplugging the cable modem for a few seconds and plugging it back in. Once the modem came back online, all three upstreams were back online and locked, the orange LED was again green, an easy fix by the homeowner without calling the operator. So, one more cool feature. On most DOCSIS 3.0 
and higher cable modems, there's a built-in spectrum analyzer. Access the spectrum analyzer, append port 8080 to the end of the IP address. So let's see how this works. Go back in. So we're going to go up here to our IP address. 192.168.100.1. We'll put a colon, 8080, and we'll hit enter. And we see the spectrum analyzer come up. We go over on the right hand side and we click run. Right there, we are seeing all the RF signals coming in. There's a lot of cool features on the right hand side. I'm going to leave it up to the user to go ahead and play with most of these. For those of you who like to play with cool tools, this one's for you. You can see all the RF signals coming into your modem. There are many features on the Spectrum Analyzer, but I'll let it up to you to play with these settings and see what you can find. The Spectrum Analyzer is also what Cable Haunt was built on, which I covered in another vid video, which I'll put in the link below, and also a tag in the above. So wrapping it up. This was a basic overview of the cable modem internal diagnostic screen. You will find some cable modems contain more or less detail. Also, you may find some cable modems and some cable operators may not give you any access at all to these diagnostic screens. Unfortunately, subscribers will take data and abuse cable operators with it. By this, I mean they will constantly harass their cable operators Anytime a single parameter is out of spec, please do not do this or you will ruin it for everyone. I'm providing you with this information so that you as a subscriber can help diagnose and fix issues within your own home. Cable operators and their technicians work very hard to keep networks up and running. I personally know it can be frustrating to have your internet service down or impaired. However, many times the issues do start within your own home's internal wiring and things we do without even realizing it, like moving a cable modem around or changing how the coax runs from point A to point B in our houses. The cable modem diagnostic screen gives us as end users the ability to self-help. I'll be doing more videos on just that how to fix issues in our homes. Until then, thanks for watching.